Hello guys and welcome back to another session of Daniel's Security Academy. Um, today we are going to talk about um, instant response and um, a four-phase plan which the NIST, the NIST, um, has put out to do instant response um, to uh, any kind of um, malware attacks you might have on your business and companies. So um, yeah, let's jump right into it. I'm gonna talk to you about uh, what is the NIST uh, four phase plan about in general. And we are actually gonna go through each of the four phases and I'm gonna explain what um, each phase is about, uh, what you're gonna do in this kind of phase. And yeah, pretty much give you some tips and hints um, how you can structure your own uh, incident response plan. So the NIST four phase plan is pretty much a plan of four phases as it already says um, having the phases preparation detection and analysis um, containment eradication and recovery and post incident activity those four phases define the entire life cycle or phases uh, inside the incident response uh, sphere and there's also um, a sixth phase uh, plan from the SANS uh, organization, which is essentially the same, but they just um, made some of those phases which are collapsed into one phase in the NIST plan, uh, a single phase. For example, the, the part about containment eradication and recovery are uh, single phases in SANS, uh, which are collapsed into one at NIST. So, and the, 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 the response plan is not like something you do once and you're done. No, it's in continuous work. So you always have to go back to the starting point and reevaluate your current state and something which you still need to do. So. Okay, let's move over to go through each of the phases. First phase, we have the preparation phase. And the preparation phase is very important as it determines pretty much your speed and effectiveness in case of an incident. This phase is the key to be quick and effective in the end. So the preparation phase is about tools, resources, personnel, training, building up a communication map and procedures which you need to use or leverage in case of an incident. So going back, so for tools, for example, you need something which is able or capable of detecting an actual incident. So uh, you can be very well prepared, but if you don't have a tool which helps you to detect your incident, you cannot react to the incident. So you need something in terms of tools to detect, maybe also support your analysis phase maybe also a tool which helps you to do the containment and isolate the malware. Um, make sure you have a backup st uh, strategy in place in case of a malware like a ransomware be hitting you that you are able of restoring your service to your original state. Um, you need your, your personnel being trained on, on the tools. They need to be able to, to use those tools um, also under stress because if you are getting attacked and maybe a ransomware is uh, encrypting your, 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 your service, um, this might create a lot of stress for your people. So those tools need to be um, operated out under stress. Um, training in terms of how do I communicate? Who do I com communicate to? Uh, what do I need to do? Who do I need to call? Um, yeah, all those kind of things tie in together into um, an entire concept, holistic approach and holistic uh, concept to um, be able to defend or at least uh, respond quickly to an incident. And another thing which is very important and it might seem a little bit dumb, but it is also a very, very big key part. And it is the fact that your IT landscape must be thoroughly documented because this will help the engineers to react fast and more effective. If they know what is in place in the landscape and um, what is not, because if they still 
like an incident happening and they need to find out, okay, what kind of servers do we have to run those uh, application? Oh, we, do we have a separate uh, database server? Additionally, you also need to create um, an escalation matrix. As I already mentioned, the communication map and the communication plan also kind of consists of or contains um, uh, an escalation matrix to make sure, as I already mentioned before, that everyone knows um, who do I need to call if something happens. And everyone has the relevant contact information. So no one has to check in his contact addresses. Okay, do I have the number of this guy? I'm not even sure. Uh, is this number even like still in use and service? Is this guy actually the, the, the guy in charge? Didn't he leave the company like three, four years ago? This kind of stuff needs to be avoided because this will uh, cost you time. Time which you do not have in case of a ransomware attack or an actual incident. And most often in the preparation phase, it also helps you if you are not an IT company to get some help from a managed service provider. Someone who does this on a regular basis. Someone who has already processes the personnel and training in place uh, for people to do this kind of job. So um, it is important that you have an instant response plan for your company, no matter if you're using a managed service provider or not. But a managed service provider may help you to react quicker and better to incidents instead of doing it in-house with your own um, tools and personnel. But this really depends on your business, right? So not every business is the same. Some have a big IT company or IT department inside the company. Um, so they might have the, the resources. So whatever fits to you, uh, but I highly can recommend take managed service providers um, to support you. Um, then we have the second uh, phase, which is, which is detection and analysis. In this kind of phase, which is the, pretty much the continuous phase, uh, which is always going on until something happens, because it's um, a continuous phase of detection. You try to detect something. Um, you compare and analyze um, indicators of compromises, IOCs, and, and if those are like actual attacks or just like a deviation from normal. So sometimes um, you will get an IOC saying, okay, this user never logged in from this location and did something like that. And then you're just gonna see, okay, he traveled to another office. Okay, this is just a deviation from the, from the standard, from the baseline we have uh, set in our detection tool. And yeah, this is just um, another guy being somewhere else during that detection itself, you need to also include network endpoints, um, clients, servers, and many more sources who feed the IOCs uh, into like a, a central system, which is then being monitored and administrated by a SOC team, for example, which do the analysis of the IOCs. And often the an analysis is like supported by some kind of um, AI or machine learning technology due to the amount of logs we receive in a SOC, because there's just so many IOCs coming in from all the sources you have inside the company. And it's almost impossible for a human being to go through all of those logs and IOCs um, manually. So that's why you get an AI or a machine learning algorithm to support you to pre-qualify something or do some research before you actually interact with this kind of case. Um, if an incident is being detected, um, it is the, the core task to gather um, as much information as possible about the incident, um, as well as understanding how the attack started and what is the scope of the attack. So what is being affected? Um, this is pretty much the analysis phase of an actual incident. And then we move it over to the third phase. The third phase is containment, eradication, and recovery. And this is pretty much like three sub-phases which are in this entire phase. So the first one is containment. Containment's goal is to reduce, stop the spread of the malware inside the network and pretty much minimize the, the impact from the malware onto your systems and services. 
often the isolation of, of hosts uh, or networks is, is part of this phase and please do not shut down or turn off systems just because they are affected or um, being under attack by a ransomware because as you might want to do a full analysis afterwards on those kind of systems what happened what um, might the attackers already have taken with them because sometimes the ransomware attack is not just about encrypting uh, your, your data maybe they also try to exfil exfiltrate some of those data so it is important to do a, like a full analysis after an incident to understand what happened and what they did so and for this one you might need to want uh, or might, you might want to um, recover some information from the memory or the logs of the system so do not shut down the system in case of an emergency isolate the system um, if it's just one system take off the network infrastructure of it or the network connections from it so the host is still running it has no connection to the internet to the network so it's just its own bubble um, or you do it with the entire network just take it off um, let, don't let any traffic route from this kind of network somewhere else and vice versa but do not just turn it off this is important for the containment phase or the containment subphase. The next subphase is the eradication, which means that you try to get rid of the malware um, from all affected systems, pretty much, and uh, which is often related uh, with uh, re-imaging or restoring um, of the servers from a backup, especially if you are hit by a ransomware attack. But in this case, you also need to check: Are my backups maybe also affected? So, um, because nowadays those ransomware attacks they are very good at destroying also the backups so a statistic i've shown in my last videos is that 88 percent of the um, enterprises being attacked and affected by a ransomware also lost their backups so only 12 percent were able to keep those and yeah this is definitely something where you have a challenge to keep some backups offline which cannot be compromised that easily then in the third part of this phase is the recovery phase and it's pretty much the final part of this phase where you bring back the services to productivity but you need to make sure that those services are running properly again so which means that you closely check and monitor um, those systems uh, that they are completely malware free and operate pretty much as expected are able to deliver a web service or database service um, to the network again and yeah so monitoring is a very important part uh, in this kind of phase to actually check tightly with those restored systems if they show any kind of um, anomaly uh, or deviation from the standard baseline uh, which might indicate that the backups which you restored the server from might be also compromised. Then we have the last and fourth phase, which is the post-incident activity phase. It is also a very important phase um, because in this phase you are essentially talking about the lessons learned from the incident and what can be done in future to prevent such an event so actually write down whatever happened and brainstorm what can we do to improve our current situation or how can we improve to let this not happen once again and therefore you 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 pretty much craft a plan of follow-up work um, to be done and possibly maybe start also an enterprise lifecycle management um, cycle to um, re-evaluate your enterprise architecture and um, maybe build up new systems or get new um, security products in place to um, fill maybe gaps we just found out you thought like you have a well defense and dev approach but then you just found out oh um, i'm missing a layer here and if you just put it over there's a, a hole in there so might be a, a good um, time to close this hole and just add another layer of security also you want to do a full documentation and report about the incident what happened when did it happen what did you do and pretty much everything what uh, is occurring between 
detection of the of, of the incident and the final recovery part this is an important phase which you need to fully document and report and depending on your location where you live where your business is operating you might be required to um, uh, report this inc uh, incident or this, this breach to an authority so depending on for example the us and which kind of um, state you are you have different kind of timelines and time frames where you need to report this kind of incident if for example customer or personal data is uh, being affected um, same also applies for 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 europe there's also multiple uh, countries which um, require companies to uh, report an incident and breach uh, if it happens and that's it for today's session again thank you so much for following till the end um, i really appreciate your comments in the comment section um, likes Subscribes always highly appreciated. Um, and I hope to see you in the next videos again. And um, till then, take care and stay safe. Bye bye.